Yes, we are a week into preseason camp. And yes, we have made another signing that has solidified the depth on this Philadelphia squad. Guys, I am in Parcero, Philly, the United of all things sports and culture here in the beautiful city of Philadelphia. And today on Dupe by the River Dupe Battles, we're going to talk about the union's latest signing. But let's get this started, shall we? I think so. Let's go. And done! started ladies and gentlemen i first off wanted to say thank you thank you thank you so much for tuning in to do by the river this show will follow everything philadelphian with me El Parcero Philly. And this episode, of course, is brought to you by the beautiful people of Philly Sports Network, PSN. It is the site and it is your source for all things Philly sports, anything as far as e-games, and of course, now we have wrestling for you. If you have any needs as far as Philly sports or any of the sports I mentioned for you, head on over to Philly Sports Network. But guys, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel as well as sharing this video and this channel to help at Barcelo Philly Girl. And guys, let's dive right into it because the Philadelphia Union just made another signing here. And more than likely, this is probably going to be the last signing of the Philadelphia Union's offseason as we are now a little less than a month away to the start of the new of the new Union season. But let's get into this, guys. The Philadelphia Union have signed 25-year-old Jakob Gleznes. I'm hoping I'm not butchering that last name. Um, again, guys, if you have the proper pronunciation of this last name, absolutely let me know because I am not an expert on some of these European names. But, of uh, yes, we brought over this 25-year-old. When the season will start, he will be 26. He is a Norwegian center back who is coming over from the Nor Norwegian top flight uh, of soccer over there. Now, of course, we don't know what the transfer fee was for this player, but what we do know, he was signed on for some TAM money, and he's here on a two-year contract with options for a third, even a fourth season. Now, another thing to remember here with Jakob is he was a captain in his former club. Now, we're talking about a 25-year-old who was already a captain of his club. Now, I know Norwegian soccer is not, you know, it's not, it's not one of the top flights, not even a second-tier European league, but you're still a captain at a young age, so you have to demonstrate some sort of leadership, some sort of character in order to get that captain's band on your arm. So that definitely to me is something that I'm excited for. We got a guy who's already got his headspace in the right place. And he's coming into to Philly where he doesn't have a job per se. If you look at the end of last season, you would think that the center back positions are already locked up. With Mark McKenzie finishing the season off strong, Jack Elliott got a contract extension last season and, and having an absolute fantastic year, you would think that, you know, Jakob is looking at the bench rule, but you're talking about a guy who spent tan money. He's a former captain. He was a match and match out starter for his former club in Norway. So now he's coming over to Philly where he's got to compete. And we will see what happens. But I, from what I'm seeing from Jakob and seeing from the highlights, he's definitely a tough-nosed defender. Of course, he played in Norway. But he's definitely got some fight and he's got some character. And he's got some leadership skills. His head is in the right place. So... When you look at this Philadelphia Union roster, and it's the reason why I'm so high on the Union going into next season, is that you look at every position from the top to the bottom, there is absolute competition going on everywhere on this pitch. You look at the, the striker position, you look at the whole midfield in total, you look at the, the back the, the, the back line there, and you look at the goalie where Andre Blake has locked up that position for over the last five seasons, over the last seven seasons, and now he actually has some competition of his own. So to me, we always talk about with the Philadelphia that they lack that superstar. They lack that DP who's willing to take over the team. But we don't have that. Yes, we don't have that. But what we do have is we have a deep squad with hungry players. When you have competition at every single one of those positions, you're going to get a team that's going to come in, match in, match out, and fight. And that is what you, you saw last season. And now this season, in my opinion, you have a younger team who's got more potential. 
as well as adding a little competition behind Jack Elliott and Mark McKenzie, we also have to remember that Mark McKenzie is going to be away at some point this summer with the U.S. Men's National Team. He is on the radar of the U.S. Men's National Team. He's gotten call-ups over the last couple couple of months, honestly, so you know he's going to go. So once he leaves, you're going to have a void that needs to be filled. You're going to have Jakob here who's already got plenty of season on him as a starter, just has to get adjusted to the American game, but he's got some season on him. So you put him with Jack Elliott while Mark McKenzie's gone, and how can you not feel comfortable with that right there? And regardless of, of whatever happens, the the aspect of having someone behind you pushing you practice every day in training every match that is huge guys that is absolutely huge you know what's crazy is <laughs> you know is since i can remember as far as the union they have absolutely struggled scoring goals well you know struggled all over the pitch but Primarily scoring goals. And this offseason, you look at the signings, the major signings the Union have done, they're all guys with defensive minded with the defensive mind. You look at Brujo Martinez, he's a center def, central defensive midfielder midfielder who's actually played as a right back. You look at, at, at Matish Orovich, he also played as a center back, but is a central defensive midfielder. And now you got a Jakob Gleason who is also a center back. So for a squad that let up 50 goals last year and still finished in third place, I I, I, I like where Ernst Tanner's head is at. He knows he's got a good team, but like the, the, the you gotta play defense. And the way he wants this team to be constructed with the fact that you're not gonna be able to spend money on a, a proven goal score, have that press working to the peak of its ability. Have the defense be stout. Oh, you're going to see that. I think it's still going to take a minute for this lineup to, to adjust. And, and and who knows? You know, I, I would I would hope that Jim Kirchin tinkers a little bit with this lineup. So going into next year. Now, I, I keep hearing a lot of rumors of, of formation tinkering for next season. Now, it, I, for one, would like Jim Kirchin to expand and, and explore upon different formation that different formations that could throw teams off. Again, we do not hang, contain a superstar that can change a game around. We do not we do not contain a Joseph Martinez. We do not contain a Carlos Vela. But what we do have on this roster is talented players. Good players, but not great players or game-changing players. If I'm Jim, I, I'm if I'm Jim, I'm tinkering and you know, I'm trying out any different formations from the 4-4-2 diamond. From the 4-2-3-1 that has worked so successfully at times when done at the right moments in the past, especially last season. And the 3-5-2. Like, the 3-5-2 is something you absolutely have to think about. Now you you genuinely have three good center backs that can play with the ball at their feet. You can put Mark McKenzie on, on the left side. You can place um, J uh, Jakob right in the center. You can play, place Jack Elliott right the right. In your midfield, you can have Kai Wagner. Um, you can have Jameer Montero playing some sort of an attacking midfielder. You can play Wagner, Montero, Ordovich, Aronson, and Bondoya. And you, and then up top, you can have Sergio Santos Gomes and Casper Shibilko. And of course, when El Sino's in there, you, you you always tend to have to go to the 4-2-3-1. He's just so dangerous out in open space out and wide, and that's what you got to go with. But... D definitely, if I'm Jim Kirchin, I'm tinkering with this lineup when I need to. If a three-back set with with your wingers out wide is the best possibility to get you a, a, a result, then I would go with it. Then I would 100% go with it. But we will see. I think this season is not going to go... Um, it was not going to start off in the right way. I still think that um, you got to remember... There's a couple pieces that are changing from last year's roster. And it's I think it's going to take a minute. But I think the Union, after a month, are going to figure it out. And they're going to find a way to mesh and gel together. And I, and, and I know that a lot of the time... And I know I hear it a lot that a lot of people want the superstar. And asking why the Union aren't, aren't spending money on players. But ladies and gentlemen, I feel good about this team. I 100% feel good about this team. And... It's just the fact that in Jim Kirch and I trust. I saw 
plenty of Jim Kirchin last season to feel comfortable about the team this year. There's depth on this team. There's competition on this team. We, we will see what happens. We will see what happens. But, you know, if we need that little piece, there's always the summertime. And you saw before from Ernst Tanner that he's not scared to make a deal during the summer. One player I want to highlight, guys, that does not get enough recognition. It's Anthony Fontana. We're talking about the 20-year-old. Of course, he was a... A homegrown here with with the with the union, one of the one of the early players played with Brandon Aronson and, and Mark McKenzie during those youth academy days, and Anthony has improved little by little, um, and this year he is poised for a big season. I would definitely go and check out um, on Philly Sports Network. Um, our own writer Matthew McLean has a great article um, interviewing a, a little short interview uh, with Anthony Fontana, some short words, but definitely motivating and definitely something. Um, you want to hear from Anthony Fontana. Now, I've been high on Anthony Fontana, and I want to see some more minutes for Anthony Fontana because I think he's got some potential and can show you a little something, especially on the attack. I want to I want to give those opportunities to him, but definitely check out that article on Philly Sports Network, guys. But Fontana is someone else we were just not talking enough about, but he could be an emerging player. I'm going to chill out and, and say this calmly, but... Maybe a Brandon Aronson type of breakout? Could that be possible? Could that be possible? We hope so. We hope so. But guys, the Union are in full swing of things, guys. This week we have our kit uh, uh, unveiling. Um, we still have some matches. Um, right now we are filming on Friday, um, J uh, January 31st. Tomorrow is the first day of February. We're already in the second month all the Philadelphia Unions of, of the 2020 year, and I'm so excited, guys, because we are now less we are now less than a month away to the start of the 2020 season, and it's crazy because I feel like this all season is going faster than I expected it would be. The season's almost here. The Union uh, tomorrow play the Chicago Fire in tr in preseason training, of course. The first game did not go so well. A four nothing beat down by Atlanta United. Yet again, but of course we did not have our full squad. Some guys were hurt, but we, we just didn't play our full squad in total. And Atlanta United had a full squad preparing for their CCL, something we are trying to do here in Philly. A little CCL placing there, guys. Everything's gonna kick in full swing. PSN is something is somewhere you do not want to turn your head away, guys. We are going to take over the Union game. You best believe that. Anything Union guys. You do not want to miss it with PSN. We got you guys covered. But that's all I got from you here today on Do By The River. Guys, if you if you guys want to talk about any of the stuff that is going on down in Chester, you want to talk about this Jakob signing, you want to talk about the roster structure that we got right now, or you want to talk about the season upcoming, in the comments below, that's where you let me know, guys. Let me know how you guys feel. But guys... Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it, guys. But I could use your guys' help to continue my growth here. Help me out by liking this video, subscribing to this channel, hitting that bell button for notifications, as well as sharing this video and this channel to help me grow. Of course, guys, again, this, this episode of Dubai by the River was brought to you by Philly Sports Network. Any of your Philly sports needs, guys, head over to Philly Sports Network to get all your needs done. I will put, of course, the website down in the description below. And if you want to follow me on other platforms, social media, you can 100% do that. Follow me on Twitter at Ed Barcero Philly. You can follow me on Instagram at L underscore Barcero underscore Philly. Of course, we are now on TikTok as well at Ed Barcero Philly. You do not want to miss the funny stuff that is going on there. Guys, again, I'm Ed Barcero Philly, the United of all things sports and culture here in the beautiful city of Philadelphia. And until next time, mi gente, do bon. Talk to you soon.